One of my favorite memories growing up here during the summer in Nova Scotia was a meal my mother would make, and that was hodgepodge to be followed by blueberry grunt. If you're interested in hearing more about these wonderful, truly Nova Scotia originals, keep watching. So what I thought I would do is break this meal down into two videos. First I'll make the hodgepodge, and then I'll follow it up with the making of blueberry grunt for my dessert. So what is a hodgepodge? Well, a hodgepodge is essentially a vegetable stew, but not just any vegetable stew will qualify to be a hodgepodge. A hodgepodge is something that's unique to Nova Scotia, and it basically celebrates the very first harvest of vegetables. So it occurs midsummer when the new potatoes are arriving and the carrots are small and the green and the yellow beans are fresh on the vine, and those are harvested and they're made into a wonderful meal that just celebrates that new harvest. And that's what I thought I would do today. Now, the one I'm going to be making here in the woods is going to be adapted from the original recipes for making it in the woods, obviously. But what I will do is I'm going to put two, maybe three different recipes in the video description below because uh, as many cooks, as many people as cook hodgepodge have a variation on it. The way my mother cooked it was different th than the way my mother-in-law cooks it now. So as I go along, I'll give you some hints in terms of what my mother did, what my mother-in-law does, how they differ, and then you can decide for yourself how you want to make it. So I will be putting those recipes in the show notes, but uh, follow along and let's see if it's something you're going to enjoy. Okay, in order to get this party started here, I have to first create a heat source. And unfortunately, we haven't had enough rain recently here in Nova Scotia, so we're back to having another fire ban, or the fire ban has been reinstated again. Uh, I did bring along my new-to-me Bushcraft Essentials XL that I, one of my viewers, who also lives here in Nova Scotia, uh, sold to me. But uh, I'm not able to have a fire in it, but I am able to use charcoal. So that's what I'm going to be doing, is lighting a small starter fire in the bottom of the stove, and then adding some charcoal to it, because of course that is permissible under the fire ban. So in order to do that, I have a piece of wood off of a stump locally that has fat wood. Not the highest grade fat wood, but fat wood nonetheless. So I'll take a few slivers off of that. That's a good piece. I won't need a lot. In the bottom of the stove I have uh, some birch bark as well already. Charcoal's good that way. It doesn't take a whole lot of fire to get the charcoal started. It, I mean, if you have a, a bigger fire, you're going to get it much more going much quicker. But again, you don't have to have a big fire. Just a, a little bit of a flame is all it needs to get started. And you just have to wait on it then to produce heat. All right. I think that's enough fat wood to get a little flame going. I have a piece of birch bark here, and since I've got the fat wood, I use the back of my knife to scrape off some shavings. I think I've mentioned before, this is fat wood, or resin-filled wood, but it's not from a pine tree. This is from a big old spruce that uh, fell, obviously, I'd say years ago, to say the least. I think I should be able to get that going. There we go. And drop that in. My knife away. Ferrocerium rod away. Charcoal's a wonderful fuel, you know, it's uh, almost smokeless. The only difficulty with charcoal is carrying it into the woods. Got a little size of that piece. Holy smokes. I have, in this bag, I have some remnants from home, both. Uh, chunk charcoal as well as briquettes. I prefer chunk ch charcoal, but I have to have to have both, or I have to use up both, because since I have it. And I am going to throw that big one in it too. All right. Now it is going to take a few minutes for that to come up to a cooking temperature. In the meantime, I've got to clean my hands up so I can prepare the vegetables. Okay, step one in preparing a hodgepodge is to get some water onto a boil to cook the vegetables in. Uh, something else I brought out today that I have not used before, another viewer sent me. This is a very, very generous gift. Uh, my friend Eric from 
Denmark sent me a Swedish military cook kit, but not just any Swedish military cook kit. This is one of the originals made in stainless steel, not in aluminum. It is heavy, but it is bomb proof. And it came with a, a complete set of components. I didn't bring everything out today because I needed the space to put the food in, which I've stored inside in a dry bag. But that's what I'm going to be cooking in. And the reason I chose this one is, of course, of course, it is a good size and heavy duty. But the top lid or the cup or the fry pan or whatever you want to call it, I'm going to use as a fry pan. And I needed to have something with deep enough size, uh, sides on it to create a sauce. So you'll see that as I go along. So let's get some water on the boil. My charcoal is doing well. Ooh. So, how much water do you need? Not much more than covering the vegetables. You do have to keep an eye on it. Um, this uh, total cook time is going to be about 15 minutes, maybe 20, depending on the vegetables and the mass and your fire and all those other things that go into regulating the heat. But uh, I think I'm going to need a bit more water than that. But at least I'll get this is enough to get things started and I can add water to it. I'll have to filter a little bit. I don't want to add lake water unfiltered to this meal and you've probably seen this trick before the way the bale works on the Swedish mess kit it has that hanger that allows it to be hung over a fire but it also acts as a handle that you can use to pick the pot up set it down without having to expose it to the fire all right I'm going to put that lid on as well for I'll show you the setup once it gets going here. Like I said, it's going to take a while for that charcoal to really get engaged. So what have I got? What have I got here? So I have a few things I won't be using right away. This is skim milk powder. I'll explain that when I get to that point. This is flour. This is optional, but only if you really can't <laughs> eat it because you're vegetarian and it's bacon. I'm using bacon today. My mother uses salt pork as a fat base, and that not only gives flavor, but it's also used to create the roux, which creates the sauce. I'm going to be using bacon and the bacon fat. Well, it's going smoky, boy. Uh, I've got a, my cook's a bowl here. I'll put the vegetables in to show you. So these vegetables all came out of my brother-in-law's garden down in the Annapolis Valley. I'm going to take a bit of prep here to, to get everything ready, of course. Fresh peas, I have to shell those. So that'll take a few moments. A couple of fresh carrots, brand new. This is this year's. They, they were in the ground probably four days ago. They're fresh out. Green and yellow beans, fresh off his vines. And that's what this is all about. I mean, you can make a vegetable stew any time of the year, but it's not a hodgepodge if you're using anything other than the freshest brand new vegetables. Small potatoes, brand new harvest potatoes. These are the small ones. More peas to shell, lots of peas to shell. So that's what I'm gonna do is take a few minutes to shell the peas. I'll cut the ends off the carrots, and because of the size of them, I'll probably cut them in half. Normally, if they're small ones, and you can get quite small carrots as well, uh, you'd leave them whole, as well as the beans and everything else. I'm going to end up cutting everything down to about a three-inch size, just so it fits in the pot well enough. And uh, But normally, like I said, you wouldn't do that. So it's going to take me a few minutes, and then I will show you what happens next. Okay, i got to tell you, you know, once that charcoal got going, it didn't take long to bring the water to a boil. I had, didn't have quite enough water in there, so I filtered out some cold water, put it in, and it's back to a boil very quickly. So, uh, I think I'll probably need to put a glove on for this. I'll take the top off. I'm going to show you a little thing about the top that uh, is really quite cool. Now, that's warm. There's no question that's warm. Not surprisingly, but I have a good hard rolling boil inside there. So here's what I've done is I've cut my vegetables up. Now, I, I have them layered in the order I'm going to be putting them in. So to start with, I have four small potatoes. They're going to go in right now. Well, I've got plenty of water in there now. Uh, the reason I'm, I keep making a mention of the water is you don't want to use too much water for this. And the reason being is you're going to be saving that vegetable water to create the sauce that's going to be going on afterwards. 
The other thing I'm going to put in now, because these are also the ones that take the longest to cook, are my carrots that I cut in half. Now it's going to take a second for those to come back to a boil, and then I'll start timing them. I want about five minutes of good rolling boil with the carrots and the potatoes before I add the rest of the vegetables. All right, so that's step one. Now, the thing I'm going to show you, I won't be using it right away, is I have uh, the handle on the top half of the, the Swedish stove has two D-ring kind of uh, things on the handle. Then the beauty of those things is you can take a stick. I haven't quite seen if this is going to... Oh, yeah, this will... Perfect. Now, I can use that stick. I'll fit it a little bit better than that. But I can use that stick to extend my reach and make a bit of a handle for the fry pan if I was using it over fire or just didn't want to have to handle the metal with my bare hand. So that'll, that's going to work out well. Now, next step. While that is going on, is I have my bacon. So I have... Uh, well, I, I cut a pound of bacon in half. This is probably a quarter pound of bacon right here. And I chose some fattier slices of bacon because I'm, even though I'm after the flavor of the meat, that smoked, salty goodness <laughs> bacon brings, I also want the fat because the fat is going to form the foundation of my sauce, which we'll get to in a few minutes. So what I'll be doing while I'm waiting for the vegetables to come back to a boil, which I think may have just occurred, is chop this into little one-inch pieces, maybe a little shorter. I'll be frying that up. The meat will be going in with the vegetables. The fat I'm going to be reserving to make the sauce. You'll see that when I get to that, that point. So my potatoes and carrots have been cooking for about uh, maybe seven minutes or so. And what I did while they were cooking or boiling is uh, I cut my bacon up. I, I wanted to to get it started. Now, what I mean by started is it occurred to me I'm going to have a bit of an issue here with only one little tiny wood stove, or good-sized wood stove, but still only one wood stove going. The idea is how am I going to cook all my vegetables and fry my bacon at the same time? So what I did is, how that pot works nicely, I'm having, it's using it as a lid, the way it's intended, but I've got the bacon inside and it's already melting the bacon fat down off of the bacon. Now it's not enough to fry it, which I'll have to do of course, but it is enough to at least get it started. So, where am I at at this point? At this point, I have my green and yellow beans. I've broken them in half, just broke the little tips off of them, the stems where they attached the, to the plant. And I have those right here. And now it's time to add those into the meal. And we'll give them about five minutes cook time. Get them off easy enough. Yep. So I'm staggering the vegetables like this. So because the potatoes and carrots take the longest to cook. The next shorter is the beans, and finally the peas. The peas cook very quickly. Now there's one other vegetable that some recipes call for, some don't, and that is cauliflower. So there is fresh cauliflower available to me today, but to be honest, uh, I do like it in my hodgepodge. It's not something my mother made or used in hers, but it is something my, my mother-in-law uses. It adds a wonderful flavor and texture to the meal. It's just that I thought I had enough in the pot. This is going to be a big enough meal for me anyway. So what I think is going to end up happening is when the vegetables are close to being done, I'm going to take the pot off and lay it next to the stove to keep everything warm. One thing I don't want to do is to leave them sit in the hot water for too long, of course, because then they overcook. But uh, then I'll fry the bacon. The bacon's not going to take very long to fry up. So how do I know when the vegetables are cooked? Well, the one that obviously takes the longest is the potato, and the easiest way is to take the tip of my knife or take a, a sharp pointy stick and slide it into the potato. If it goes into the potato with little or no resistance, you're ready. I'm going to take it off, I think, just before that point because I know if they're going to sit in the water for a few minutes, they're going to get a little extra cooked. But... Uh, yeah, so all I have to do now is wait a couple more minutes. I'll add the peas. I think at that point I'm going to take it off the heat so I can get the bacon fried up. It's a bit of a timing thing, as all cooking in the woods is, especially when you're, you, know, you have the variables of, of uh, the fire, in this case charcoal, which is a nice, even, intense heat. But space is my, my issue today, is how much space do I have to cook with? Uh, then we'll just talk about some variations when I go on to the next step. All right, I'm going to get my gloves on. This is where the guessing game begins, at least for me, trying to 
judge the timing on the cooking of the vegetables and everything. Of course, if I was doing this at home on my electric range, everything would be a little bit more controlled. But, you know, that's actually one of the fun parts about being in the woods is making do, or more than making do, taking advantage of what you have to, to do the cooking with and, and gaining the experience. Because uh, I think this is a very natural way of cooking and a very fun way of cooking, to be honest. Now, my bacon is starting to melt. I'll show you, be showing you that in a minute. But now I have to add the peas. So there are my peas, all shelled, ready to go in. And what I think I'll do is I gave the potatoes a poke a minute ago, and they're not quite ready. They're very close, but they're so close that I, what I thought I would do is just take everything off the heat. I'm going to lay it right up against the side of the stove. And I do notice my charcoal is starting to get down a little bit. So I'm going to add a few pieces of charcoal here and start frying my charcoal, start frying up the bacon. The bacon's not going to take too long. It's already considerably melted. Ooh, that is hot. Don't worry, this uh, heat's not going to go to waste. That's all I need for now. Heat's not going to go to waste. I'll need the heat for dessert and coffee. So there is a lot of heat coming off the side of that stove. I, I won't be able to show you this, but the heat or where the pot is laying right up against the stove it's bubbling away so it's it's still simmering okay there is my bacon let me see if i can show you this in the bottom of the fry pan already melting and now let's fry it up that's kind of cool i can use the rock there to make sure it doesn't tip on me So that's going to take a few minutes for the bacon to fry, and uh, what I'll do is work on this, bring it back when that's close, and we're ready to go on to the next step of creating the sauce. All right, now comes, at least for me, the trickiest part of the whole thing. So I've learned a valuable lesson here, and that is stainless steel. Don't let it get too hot with bacon in it because it will scorch the bacon. Actually, the bacon's not scorched, but I'm going to have some scrubbing to get the, the uh, burnt parts, or at least the brown, uh, out of the bottom of the, of the uh, fry pan here. Now, so what I want to do is, my vegetables are still simmering away here. It's a lid from another pot. I'm going to take the bacon that's draining to the bottom of the fry pan in that direction. I'm going to be using that momentarily. But the bacon I want to remove, if I had another way of doing this, I would prefer to do it this way, but... I think I'm going to have to do it in this direction, though. Get all the bacon to that end. Why don't I use a spoon for this? It makes more sense. Uh, no, I'm ahead of myself. Okay, so what I have to do is put the bacon aside for a second. Might as well just let it stay warm next to the stove. That's what I'll do. Yeah, I'm ahead of myself. So what I've got to do here is drain the vegetables. Now, I'm going to save the water because the water is gonna form part of my sauce because there's a lot of flavor in that water and a lot of nutrition. So no wasting of the water. So on go the gloves. And my bowl right here is gonna become the receptacle for the water. And I have my cooksa here to mix up some milk with. Let's see if I can do this without. Yeah, you can tell how hot that was. Now it's a good chance I won't be using all of this water But I do need to get it all drained off, and I'll just put those right next to the stove again to stay hot. Now I'm going to put the bacon in with the vegetables. So there's my cooked bacon going directly into the vegetables. So if you are vegetarian, or for whatever reason don't want to use meat, then what I'm going to be doing next, you can substitute something else for. So I'm going to be using the bacon fat to create a roux. And a roux is an elementary way of creating a sauce and basically all it is is I'm going to be combining that fat with some... make sure everything is in camera and frame here. Don't burn myself or spill anything. Okay, so there's my fat. My bacon fat is all down on the bottom of my fry pan here. And to create a roux, I mix flour in with that bacon fat. Making sure I can see what I'm doing here. Good. Okay. Where did I put my flour? 
So not a lot. You don't need a lot of flour for this to start. And you stir in flour until it creates a paste. So I probably have a little bit more than a tablespoon. I'm going to put right into the fat. Oh, it's going to use every bit of this and more. Ants crawling on me. Yeah. More flour. So once I get to this mix through, I'll show you. Oh yeah, now it's starting to work out. <laughs> Interesting side benefit. Doing this in the fry pan with those brownings of the bacon is adding a lot of brown to my roux. The roux is the paste created with the fat and the flour. So that's going to transfer into more flavor, hopefully. So I mentioned you could do an alternative to using the bacon fat. And the alternative would be to use um, margarine or olive oil or some other fat that you heat or you mix with the flour. Okay. Now this is thick. I hope I didn't make it too thick because then I have the next step to go on to. So you can see I've created a roux, not the most appetizing looking thing in the bottom of the fry pan. That's because of the brownings from the bacon. But I want to do two things. One, I'm going to pour in a little bit of this vegetable water. Mix that. That'll th start to thicken up, especially when I put it back in on top of the vegetables. And I've now I've got to also make some milk. Now, I'm using skim milk powder, and I'm going to be making this a little thicker than you normally would for skim milk. I have no idea what the amounts are here. Uh, the re if I was at home, whole cream or blend or regular milk. So here's where some of the differences are. If my mother were making this when I was growing up, she would use only milk, whole milk, no cream. Uh, she would use milk and butter and it would not be turned, she would not make a roux. So in other words, the stock of the meal itself would be milky, just milk. And we would have a, a bowl on, our ta on the table with uh, milk and uh, the vegetables sitting in it. The one my mother-in-law makes turns that roux into a really thick, creamy sauce, which hopefully is what's going to happen now when I put this back on the heat. So let me reposition the camera and I'll show you what I'm doing on top of the heat here and see if we can't create the sauce for the vegetables. All right, my roux and water have gone on back on the heat. This, so as this heats up, this should thicken into a sauce. Now you may have noticed I've used very little in the way of seasonings. Uh, one of the reasons why is that the vegetables come with their own wonderful fresh out of the ground flavors. The bacon adds a whole other layer of flavor to this. But I will be adding a little bit of salt and pepper. That's it. From my kit. Oh yeah, okay, we're starting to thicken up now. So I've used some of the water. Can you see how that's thickening up? I've used some of the water from the vegetables and as that thickens, and that'll go really thick, I'll use the milk to add to it. And now it's time to add the milk. And even though that thinned it out, if I keep stirring and the heat is still applied, that should re-thicken in a minute. All right, what I'll do is thicken this up to the point that I'm ready to use it, reposition the camera, and show you how I assemble the final product. Okay, my roux is bubbling up on top of the stove. Actually, I think that's where I'm going to add the salt and pepper. So, take my glove off for a second. I'm about to transfer the vegetables into my bowl. But here's my 
salt. I'm going to add a little bit of that directly to the roux. Uh, maybe a quarter teaspoon, not a whole lot. You can always add more. It's hard to take it out after you add it, though. All right, same thing, about a quarter teaspoon. Give that a quick stir. Oh, that's thick. Yeah, we're ready. Now, transfer the vegetables into the bowl. You know, it's the first time I've used this Swedish mess kit, but holy smokes, what a great, great kit it is. A bit heavy, but bomb proof. All right, here come my vegetables all into my bowl. Bacon, all mixing through nicely. Potatoes are cooked well, nothing is burnt. Not that it should be. Peas, carrots, bacon. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so there's my base of my hodgepodge. I have my potatoes, my carrots, my green and yellow beans, my peas, and my bacon. And now I will add my sauce, which as you can see is boiling up nicely. And all I have to do is add that sauce on top. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a meal fit for a king. Now, I'll reposition the camera. It's going to take a second before that's cool enough for me to eat. And then we'll just talk about a few of the variations on how you can make this meal. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. I can tip it too without <laughs> losing any of it. Everything all mixed together there. All right, now, the age-old question. Spoon or fork? <laughs> I think I'll start with the fork, and what I can't get with the fork, we'll eat with the spoon. All right, is it like what I remembered as a child? Ooh, boy, those are tender. Okay, you're going to have to try this to believe it, or you can take my word for it. Simple ingredients, right? Just fresh vegetables, a little bit of bacon, of course bacon helps everything, a tiny bit of salt and pepper, and of course the, the bacon fat and flour roux. But what I'm getting in here is a little bit of smokiness from the bacon. But the intense flavors from all the vegetables, there's nothing like fresh vegetables right out of the garden by a few days, not stored in a cold cellar somewhere, eaten fresh like this. That's what makes a hodgepodge different from any other vegetable stew, is the freshness. <laughs> okay, I think the way I did this, I created something new. Something different from what my mother did, something different from what my mother-in-law did. So a little bit of both. My mother, as I mentioned, used just milk and butter. My mother-in-law used a salt fat and heavy cream. So I've got something that isn't quite a heavy cream, but the, it, the, you know, the sauce is almost as thick. Yeah, thicker than regular milk would be. Wow. Okay, I, I can't say enough about this. Let me finish this meal off, because uh, of course now we're going to have to go on to the dessert in a few minutes. will be another video to follow this one. But if you have the opportunity to get out and find some fresh vegetables, some fresh spring vegetables right out of the ground, or if you grow them yourself, try this recipe. If you're in the woods, you might want to try it my way. Uh, I'm sure you will be able to come up with something better than the way I did it. It would be nice to have had it open fire in two pots. You know, a little bit more control and uh, more space to cook on than, I, than what I had. Um, otherwise, have a look at the recipes in the show notes below. Pick one that you think might work for you that you can try at home. Let me how, know how it turns out if you do try it. 
I'd also be interested, I can't imagine Nova Scotia is the only place in the world that has come up with this wonderful recipe. We take ownership of it. We call it a hodgepodge. It did come from a French derivative root. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the word. I will put it on the screen. So our Acadian roots anglicize the words to create hodgepodge. What hodgepodge basically means a conglomeration or a stew or a mixture of things. So there's no magic there. But the key ingredient here is fresh, just fresh, fresh whatever you put in. And it makes a huge difference. So yeah, leave me a, a comment in the section below. Of course, now the wind picks up. Feels nice, actually. Leave me in a comment in the comment section below whether you've tried this, if you plan on trying it, if you make something similar or something different, I'd be interested in knowing. Okay, until dessert is ready, to take the time to get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now. Oh yeah.